let me welcome all of us to the continuation of this telecast. Today marks the fifth slot of our study series, and we have just landed on the third chapter of the book of Nehemiah, and this 22 chapter book of the third chapter of the book of Nehemiah is all about the world continuation and closing the gap. Let us pray. Our God and our Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we entrust into your able hand every word to be spoken every impulse of participation and the entire coverage of this online Bible study that you breathe upon it with the fullness of the strength of your mighty presence through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Welcome once again. I would not like to bother you with the reading of scriptures of who did what and how it was done. It could as well be a recipe or a recording of who did what for records purposes. But this study is much more than simply just that. It's all about closing up the gap, closing up the gap. It's nice for us to know the results of the broken walls, the impact that created. You will need to appreciate this more to see the necessity, to see the compulsion of what has occasioned eight months of praying, fasting, and look of expenses to get the world reconstituted. What broken world created over a century was captivity, oppression, and wall gaps. That happened about 300 years before, around 600 BC, when Daniel was taken captive. And that captivity left them with no little bit of dignity behind. The king was captured. And it was not without the knowledge of God. The Lord gave Joachim, king of Judah, into the hand of the king of Babylon. And in those days, the central bank was in the house of the Lord with the vessels of the house of the Lord all gone. And he now subjected them to oppression. So the new captivity, the new oppression, and the new wall gaps. Not just that one. Idolatry replaced godliness, replaced the importance of the God of Israel, who was known as Yahweh. Because the idolatry affected those who were captured. They were to worship the idols of Babylon. The idolatry affected the remnants left in Jerusalem. They were under surveillance. It stripped the temple and desecrated it. So the broken wall created the reign of the old serpent. You know, Ecclesiastes 10, it says, if you break through the wall, the serpent will bite you. The serpent will bite him who breaks through the wall. The wall was not just broken into. The wall was broken down and the serpent was raining. So it was the reign of the serpents. Reign in the sense that Sambalat, the idolater right from Samaria, was in charge to make sure that even the priests back home, they were under supervision of idolaters. When karma, whatever you call it, becomes secular, then you know that there will be measures of the, your God visited by the powers that be. Yes. The third consequence, of the broken wall was the loss of Jewish manpower wealth. How do I mean national wealth? The youth were gone because not only did they capture them, the best of them were to serve in the foreign palace. And they said they were to bring those people of Israel, of the royal family, of nobility, youth without blemish, and some unskillful in all wisdom, endowed with knowledge, understanding, learning and competent to serve in the king's palace. They were depleted 
of the ability. They were depicted of the ability of the skilled use of their days. Not just that alone. Captivity and oppression entered their country because we are told those who escaped exile. In other words, those who managed not to be captured, where they were in great trouble and shame. No privacy, no wealth, no God to serve, and no freedom. So they were in great shame. Those are the consequences of broken walls. When the integrity of your privacy has been broken into, then all these ones will just be the norm. Not just that alone. There was the ridicule of the threat of the enemy. You know, when you have freedom, you have some measure of sanity. And when you open your eyes, it's your pressure that you see, because even when they decided, even when they made an attempt to reverse the situation, people like Jean-Pilat, they horrified them with the ridiculous threat of the enemy. What is this thing you are doing? Are you rebelling against the king? And that lasted over 200 years. Besides, the broken wall also revisited the threat of the enemy on the site attempts at reconstruction. Because in chapter four of the verse one and two, they were quoted, what are these people Jews doing? Will they restore things? You have been abandoned by our God for 200 years, will they sacrifice? Will they finish up in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps? And I put it on capitals, heaps of rubbish and bond and that. When you are ridiculed and there is nothing you can do about it, the pain is more. So now let's, I will establish, I will establish, I will be with you in a, in a short while. Are you looking? Please, if you just will excuse me, I my I'm told my screen is not shared. Let me just see how I can contact my engineers who appear not to be around. Please bear with me. Bear with me. I'm trying to retrieve my
Go to the other side. Go to the other side. Now you start giving me water. Let me just welcome you back and apologize for the break in transmission. It has been some technical force for which I'm trying to perfect the ICT computer. Let us pray again. Our Father, we thank you very much for the continuation of this telecast through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I don't want Now, what I just said when my screen was not shared is that... is that closing the gap is the issue of our focus, which has become a necessity. Because for 200 years, the captivity has given them the loss of almost everything. They were in captivity, they were in oppression, their world was nakedly exposed to the outside world, and that was the issue that they devil them. Chapter four, chapter one of Daniel, the first four verses, talk eloquently about this one, how God gave the king, you know, to the enemies. Having been done with that, some ballads also reigned as a serpent. And verse eight, we are told that Anybody who digs a pit will fall into it. And a serpent will bite him who breaks through a wall. And I was just saying that the serpent was not just biting, the serpent was raining. That old serpent was raining because idolatry had gripped both the captured and the free. And the temple of Jerusalem was so desecrated and stripped of worth and holiness that both abroad and at home the serpent was raining that in addition to that the broken world brought in the loss of jewish pretend to serve in the king's palace they were in Babylon far away. They were over a thousand kilometers away, precisely in, in the region of 1,500 in Babylon. Those walls broken down did not just stop at that one. Captivity and oppression reigned because we were told the survivors who were back home, not only were they in poverty, they were in great trouble, they were in great shame, and the wall of Jerusalem was broken down, not just broken down, the gates were destroyed by fire. It's one thing for you to have a gate that's mendable, it's another thing for your gates to have been reduced to flames and ashes. So when we're talking about, you know, about building up the broken wall, about creating, rebuilding the wall of Jerusalem, what we're saying is that 
for them to restore things, the problem they had to surmount was the ridicule of their oppressors. The wall of Jerusalem broken down and home and abroad, like the one of those songs of the Psalms by the wall, by the river of Babylon, there were one galas and wept when they were ridiculing us. So that was this. those were the consequences of the broken down wall. Ridicule, threat of the enemy. Let me now go to a resume of seven categories of people who weather the storm of rebuilding it, of closing the gap. Because we're talking about closing of the gap. Who are those who built or rebuilt? The first very category, they are the priests. They rebuilt the physical and spiritual broken wall. In chapter three of our book of study, we are told Elisha the high priest rose up with his brethren, the priests, he built the sheep gates. They consecrated it and set its doors. They consecrated it as far as the tower of 100, as far as the tower of Anel. So the priest rose to the challenge. Besides, if you remember Jericho, when Jericho, Jericho was captured, a few people as he was speared, not just Rehab and his family, because settlers from Jericho, those who are resettled in Jericho, they too participated next to him, the men of Jericho. That category was goldsmiths, those who were into ornaments. It did not matter what the profession was, goldsmiths participated. The fourth category were perfumers. We are told in verse eight. Next to them, Uziel, the son of Anha, goldsmith, they repaired. One of the perfumers repaired and they restored. When you hear they restored Jerusalem as far as the broad wall, about building up the wall for a lot of meters or fraction of kilometers, they dared the challenge and came up to do their nation proud. The fifth category of those who built, they were administrators and politicians. There's always a good side of politicians, you know. They were not just going to be sweet mouth. They came up and physically were part of the rebuilding. So you find that among the seven categories of those who did it, the last but not the least, even families that were all girls' families. Because we are told of Shalom, the son of Oesh, ruler of half of the district of Jerusalem, repaired he and his daughters. So those who are a family of all girls, they were part of the rebuilding. Gender was no longer a hindrance. And the last but not the least, altar servers, the temple servants, they came. So it did not matter who you are, what you are, and how you are, you were welcome to be part of the rebuilding. And in the rebuilding, all hands were on deck. Let me just give you a glimpse of the world map of the Jerusalem wall. For those of you who have not been to Jerusalem, that's the shape of the temple. The shape of the temple, the shape of the temple, you can see the northern side, the ship gates, the old gates. You could see, now you appreciate down the valley, the down gates where dongs were. You could see the pool of Shalom. You could see far up temple, and this is just what they rebuilt in earnest. And if you have not been to Jerusalem, there's a shape of the fifth century wall of Jerusalem revisited in reconstruction. Now let's visit how these priests who worked on the fence. What was their modus operandi? They were 24 seven priests, both at work and at home. Because the Bible says in verse one, Eliashib, Eliashib the high priest rose up with his brethren, the priests, and they built the ship gates. If I could show you again, the ship gate is very high up there, you know, just on top of the temple, 
when you bring sheep for sacrifices, they started from their place of work. In verse 8, we are told, above the horse gates, the priests repaired each opposite his own house. At work, the priests were building a wall. When they came back home, they joined the community. And this map is a summary of all those who were involved. In white, you will see the wall shape. You will see the groups of those names that were, you know, incidented as the people who built Jerusalem gates saw the convergence of those who were touched by the necessity to do their nation proud. So if you were to just add, ignore the 22 verses of chapter 3, that on this, on this map, you will see the names and the families of those who rebuilt. But it's gone. How did the priests work on defense? When you are talking about the priests, the priests for all believers, you know, is, is what I can remember. Because if you are God, you are in the real and at work and at home for spiritual purposes, the world of the nation is your concern to be built. First Timothy chapter 2, first two verses say, first of all, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all men, for kings and all who are up high positions, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life, godly and respectful in every way. If you are a believer, the peace of this nation, whatever hindrances notwithstanding, should be your concern at work and at home and wherever we live, that is the principle of all believers in the horizontal lane. Now let's recapture and reanalyze how priests work on the fence. You know, everyone at home spread sideways by motivation. Because in verse 6 of chapter 4, which you'll we'll get to in the future, he said, so we build the wall. It was joy and tears. The Gideon, you know, Gideon singing that a lot of such choruses. When you spread your hands sideways and you touch the other person, a wall of human flesh is built. And we join together to have his height. You know, that wall was almost 40 feet high. Half of the height of the wall of Jerusalem was 19 feet. That's about two stories. For the people who had a mind to walk. When you are motivated, there's nothing that is too difficult. How did the priests feel? Because they spread, they, they, they like salt, like light, they diffuse in the darkness of the environment. So the spiritual world is so big, the spiritual world is so much that everyone with all prayer was, I remember there was a question in the last telecast about the insurgents. So when we're talking about spiritual work, it can be built through everyone with all prayer. You are praising God, you are, maybe you, you, you are thanking God, you are, singing, you are, you are reciting all of for all. And if you see that in Timothy chapter 2, verse 1, I urge that prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all men. So when we talk about prayers, in verse 18 of chapter 6 of Ephesians, he said, pray at all times in the spirit with all prayer. What does all prayer mean? Categories of a prayer, you can sing it, you can whisper it, you can recite it, you can think it. When you're praying to God and everybody is so involved, our security wall of this nation with no strength. How big? Now let's now come to the quantum of what they built. How big was the wall that Nehemiah built? Or how big was that wall that was rebuilt? In length, it was about four kilometers round. A little over four kilometers. The average height of the wall was 12 meters. That's 39.37 feet, almost four stories of a tall wall. You know, most of our walls that you are used to these days, they are just thin walls of nine inches or one foot, which are hollow. 
If you have been to Israel, their walls are solid blocks. The average was 8.2 feet. You know what that means? If, let me teach you some little medicine. If you spread your hand sideways to a wall, the tip of your long or middle finger, from your middle finger to the next finger, is about your height. A man that is six feet will still be dwarfed in the thickness of the wall. And I said, it's only, it's only Goliath, who was about 9.75 feet, who will exceed the wall. Imagine you are in the wall, no wonder, you know, that, that, that prostitute was living in the wall. That wall was so thick that if you spread your hand in the wall, it would not even be able to get to the limits of the wall. And there were 34 watchtowers. Those were security rooms on the wall to see who were the people to be careful about when multitudes were coming. They, were, they had 34 watchtowers and seven main gates open for traffic. So that's the wall they built. Mighty, very tall, nobody to scale the wall of 40 feet, and it's difficult unless you have a bulldozer to easily break the wall that is about eight and a half feet in width. That's the wall. And if we go on, how the wall was done, they had to start clearing up the mess. When a house collapses, you have an obstruction of the collapsed building. You can imagine that very thick wall that's over eight feet thick, that was broken down to pieces over 100 years. You need to clear a lot of mess, a lot of rubbles, burnt gates. The building would need repairing. So when we're talking about the builds, the ship gates, a huge gate, you first of all chill the remnants of the of the bond wood out, they consecrated. So the priests did not only rebuild the consecrated, desecrated area, they they were very they were very security conscious and also they were holiness prone. Not only they just they all build, they dedicated it immediately. So talking about cracked wall, I'll give you a computer picture when a wall is burnt. Fire will crack even the strongest concrete. So a burnt wall will leave you with patches of burnt stuff, which may be very, very deep. And if you are looking for strength, you need to chisel out all these, all these, you know, fire will, will raise down and reduce concrete to stand. So these are the things that will assist your imagination to come closer, even if you are not the builder, that they, 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 they dealt with them. Going on with how the wall was built, they had now to place and replace materials. They said one of the perfumers repaired. There will be repair. You can see the crack wall again. You chisel out those stuff and bring them out. If they have not gone into the depths of the building, you, you, know, you, you replace them. If they've gone, you may have to put in hold the entire wall and replace. They rebuild the wall. It was by repairing and rebuilding, and it was about beam replacement. You now see the importance of timber. Jerusalem is a desert place turned into a garden, and there are no mighty trees. They had to come from 100 kilometers away. So when they are talking about replacement of beams of the 12 gates, it's quite a feat. Let me just bring you into perspective of good imagination. A man in the headroom of about 14 feet. That's one and your stories. Since the horse, unlike the vehicle, does not have a basket. So horse gates are big feet and they are for the access of kings and chariots. Once again, let me take you to a panoramic uh, you know, overview of the wall of Jerusalem builds. You could see those spots inside where priests lived, where Zedok lived all around the temple. 
the house that when you come down was towards the south, you are seeing the pool, the other areas, the kings of our palace, those who are the scattered areas that have been demolished and bastardized. So when we're talking about, those are just references of the computer picture downloaded. Now, how again was the world working on the world? Um, gave you this, the purpose, they were determined. There was persistent, they persevered. They had a perspective, they were, had a point of view, and they had coordination. So all these things were the tools that engaged their participation all for a common goal. So we built a world, chapter four, verse six says, and all the world was joined together to his half. They were not distracted by failure or success. And like I did tell you once again, that is what they set out to rebuild. I'll just point, I'll, I'll spotlight 34 watch towers, seven main gates over for traffic. Let me tell you what a watchtower looks like. That's a typical gate. In this picture, you are inside the fence. That inverted V is a gate. On its side is the porter's lodge, the man who operated the gate. The gate was manned 24 seven. On the left side, you see the steps leading to a ramp that climbs up to the top of the gates. And you see those small two windows, that's where the watchmen stayed. They are over there and they will be shouting to those who are around, some people far off, they are about a thousand, they are holding weapons. So everybody around, they had 34 of this, of, of this type of thing. And they had to reconstitute them because they have been deprived of security. Modern day wall of Jerusalem, you could see how tall the, the, the walls were. And you could see because are about 40 feet, about eight feet thick, those are not simple walls built in a day. Now the priests were the great motivators. They worked on defense because there was unity of purpose. Chapter two, chapter four, underlined and they said let us rise and build so they strengthened their hands for the good work for the people had a mind to work there was purpose the present wall of the old city is that bigger frame you see outside a smaller frame and that's to show you ancient and modern so when we're talking about the old gate, I'll talk about the old gate later on, which is about Northwest on your left on top. You'll find that these walls were in perpetuity of maintenance from 2,500 years ago. Now let's now matching the information of old and new. If you go on pilgrimage, you always see it. The most popular gate now, when you're going to there, that place is the Jaffa Gate. Around 1538 was when that Jaffa Gate was built. And the Jaffa Gate, it bears the inscription of the Sultan Soleiman who, uh, who ordered this construction when they were in captivity. And the Jaffa Gate is the best known gate, is the busiest of Jerusalem's pilgrimage today. It was built facing west in the direction of the ports of Jaffa. That gate opens to Jaffa Road. He said that it's one of the seven main gates of the old city Jerusalem wall. The name Jaffa, both the Jaffa Gate and the Jaffa Road, they are named after the port of Jaffa, where Prophet Jonah embarked. That was the area Jonah went to the port in Jaffa. Instead of going right to Iraq, he went left towards Spain. He was swallowed by the fish on the way. So how did the priests walk on the fence? Unity of purpose cannot be over Jesus Christ told us, 
about the MasterCard of that visa called Inter Purpose. Matthew 18, 19. Again, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Unity starts from marriage. This is why Satan is attacking marriages a lot, because he does not want the Christian to have any two. Now, role models were these men of God because leadership was what was the major mastermind of the success of the reign of Jerusalem wall. It was leadership by example in building the gates. Then Eliezer, the high priest, rose up and his brethren, the priests, and they built the ship gates. Priests, they reversed desecration and retained consecration. They built, they consecrated it, and set it doors. You see, dedicating something to God, even the food you eat, they matter a lot. So our priestly role is to make sure that we remove as much as possible in our life things that have to do with desecration and sustain how to perpetuate consecration. They repaired, not only at work, but each opposite house. They were all medals and in walls. You see, in First Peter chapter 2, verse 10, he said, once you were no people, but now you are God's people. And our priest food, our royal priesthood is well articulated in verse 9 of First Peter chapter 2. You are a chosen people, a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people for one purpose, that you may declare the wonderful deeds of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Now, before I switch to this third part of this Zoom study, role modeling is very important. Priestly reaction for mending broken walls, Psalm 122 from verse 6, he says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper will love you. Peace be within your walls. And verse 9 says, for the sake of the house of the Lord, I will seek your good. In our royal priesthood performance expectation, we are to live above obstacles of discouragement and other areas. But we must not fail to talk about the rich people because they tactfully, they tactfully withdrew. People of affluence, they opted out. We are told in verse five of our chapter three of study, and next to them, the turquoise, the turquoise repaired, but their nobles did not put neck to the work of the Lord. You know, rich men, those of you who are used to site work, we know that site work the language that on site work is not the most polite. And you know, Jesus Christ said, again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. You see, talking about the rich men who opted out, the rich and mighty, they will not obey those who are appointed as officers in the work you need to know how to talk to you. See the way that's one talking to somebody. But I pastored a church, I remember. I pastored a church, it was 21 Road Festac, and we were to San Phil, the portion that eventually is the 41 Road Church today. And I told them, if you are too handsome, don't come. If you are too rich, don't come. If you are too highly placed, don't come. But thank God, they all came. And we worked on site. So most of the time, royalty, wealth, status could be, and Jesus Christ said it could be easier for the travel. So wealth occasionally could be a hindrance when it comes to condescending low to do many jobs for God. Let's come up with challenges. Now, come to your person. Where, <coughs> including the gap, are you opting out? We have national, either on the national bro broken walls, 
our security is a y jerusalem today you get there you only see some wires and they say if you cross that wire from here to to arabia and allow will leave you. in those days there were thick walls satellites the security gadgets are different today but in our own national broken walls isaiah chapter 6 verse 7 says give him no rest until he establishes jerusalem and makes the praise in us and we are told to pray for the peace of jerusalem how about tribal and ethnic economic gaps deuteronomy 23 20 says to a foreigner you may lend upon interest but to your brother you shall not lend upon interest the lord your god may bless you in all that you undertake in the land which you are entering to take possession we have ethnic economic gaps closing up information gaps you know most of the time we talk about ourselves rather than talking to ourselves the bible says matthew 18 15 if your brother sins against you go and tell him his fault between you and him alone if he listens to you you have gained your brother that's one on one instead of gossiping and being defiled by not being able to ascend the hill of the lord he will backbite you can if, if that do not work one to three or four if he does not listen take one or two with you that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses or even we to the church so not just physical walls i would call up to close gaps we are to close community gaps where are you opting out how about family deficiencies the bible says if anyone does not provide for his relatives and especially for his own family he has his own faith and is worse than unbeliever where again are you opting out there are vocational and responsibilities a lot of vocational difference are making professional split apart the, 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 the lawyers the doctors everybody wants to be a boss and factions just get on here and there and when you are divided your strength is weak intercessory gap is what you must not fail to recognize because god god expressed his pain in ezekiel chapter 22 i sought for a man among them who should build up the wall and stand in the bridge before me for the land that i should not destroy it but i found god does not want a gap that will lead to the destruction of souls and it may also interest you that we have gaps of training there are gaps of learning there are gaps of retaining learning my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge that's a gap of training and he said since you have forgotten the law of your god that's a gap because of retaining knowledge that will tell you that make you remember return it as prayer requests i don't remember i don't know how i remember scriptures because i tell him lord if it must not if this book must not be part of my mouth don't let me fail so there are gaps of learning and training we have a lot of scriptural mediocrity in our time people will say my pastor said not the bible says there are racial gaps that woman at the world or the, or the uh, that woman at the well of Samaria was saying, you know, why are you asking me? Jews have no dealing with Samaritans. We are so fragmented in racial differences, yet Jesus Christ's food is to do the work of God and to complete it. The field is ready for white and white for harvest. But most of us, we are, we are scattered in the we are scattered in the pockets of racial and tribal differences. 
no gaps of discrimination. As far as scriptures are con is concerned, there is neither Jew nor Greek, neither slave nor free, neither male nor female, for you are one in Christ. That's the way everyone recognizes you. Because Jesus Christ is our peace. And he has made us one and has broken down the dividing wall of hostility. If you are a child of God worth the thought, you feel at home with any white, black, yellow, green, or red, or short, or long, or tall. Because he has broken down the dividing wall of hostility. When it becomes different, difficult to mix with other Christians, watch your own doorstep more than their Christian figure on others. So we are brought up by scriptures to close the gap of discrimination. How about ministry gaps? He gave us the ministry of reconciliation. In fact, our, our, our assignment is to reconcile others to Christ, is to, Christ, is to reconcile others to one another. And in Ephesians chapter 4, his gifts were the assumption of the apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. And in verse 13, he says, until we all attain to the unity of faith and knowledge of the Son of God, until we all close the gap and there are no medi scriptural mediocres or inferior, there are no inferior together in the house of God. Until we get to this mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Let's see the challenges of our ministry gaps and dangers. You know, in Ezekiel chapter 3, that, that passage frightens me. Do you know that your social or church community ministry is a ministry that you, you your, your, your ministry to the wicked they are tied to your salvation. He says, son of man, I bid you a watchman for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, you shall surely die, and you give him no warning, nor speak to warn the wicked from his wicked way. In order to save his life, that wicked man shall be his with it, but his blood, I will require at your hand. Don't say you are born again. It doesn't matter whoever is going to hell. Good luck to them. When you fail to assist them on, God says you will join them in hell. That's why pastors are in hell. That's why Christians are in hell. When God says, I will require the blood from your hand, it means you have this judgment of a murderer. Ministry gaps, they are tied to your salvation. But if the wicked man, but if you want the wicked man and he does not turn from his wickedness or from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity. But you will have saved your life. So your salvation is tied to your ministry to save souls. How about the backslider? How about Christians who are backsliding? Again, the Bible says, if a righteous man turns from his righteousness and commits iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die because you have not warned him. He shall die for his sin. And his righteous deeds will shall not be remembered. But Lord, I will require your hand. You see people messing up. Instead of correcting them, you are God's, you know. There are no holy gobses, you know. That one is disgracing us. Our pastor is messing up. Go and tell him, pray for him. Nevertheless, by 21 says, if you want the righteous man not to sin, and he does not sin. He shall surely live because he took warning. And you will have saved your life. So our salvation is tied to minister to the wicked and to the righteous backsliding. In closing up the gas bridge, can you imagine? Can you imagine the that Noah builds that is 400 feet? Is so 
almost four plus long. How did God inspire survivor was enter in obedience? It weathered the storm of 40 continuous days raining from top and 150 floating in water. The Bible says, verse 16, and they entered, male of all flesh, and they that entered, male and female of all flesh, went in as God had commanded him, and the Lord shot him in. You know what that means? The Lord closed the window on top of the ship that was so tight that rain did not enter it. So when we close gaps within our reach, God will close the gap that is beyond our reach. Let us talk about scriptural gaps. In the days of the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There were no frequent vision. There was also the famine of the world in Amos 8 11. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will send a famine on the land, not the famine of bread, nor thirst of water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. In our days, God is calling us like he did in Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 17. I said to them, you see the trouble we are in, how Jerusalem lies in ruins and the gates burnt. Come, let us build the wall of Jerusalem that we may no longer suffer disgrace. You are involved and so am I. Let's talk about specific individual ministry assignment gaps. Sometimes God has called you. Sometimes God has given you an assignment and you are leaving it fallow. God said to the reluctant Moses, come, I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring forth my people, the sons of Israel out of Egypt. Many of us are reluctant to do assignments God is giving us. How about Adam and, Adam and Jonah in that Jaffa gate, Jaffa port? He was running from Jaffa port. He was running from going to minister in Iraq. Iraq from Jaffa port is 1,322 kilometers by sea. He eventually got there in three days inside the belly of the fish. The fish became his boats. So, the word of the Lord came to Jonah at the same time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So many of us, we have individual ministry assignment gaps that we are turning the blind ear or the blind eye to. And it's also good to know in what specific areas God is sending you. God is not sending everybody to everywhere. Because the Bible says, in the days of Elijah, there were many widows in Israel, but Elijah was sent to none of them except to Zarephath, to the land of Sidon to a woman who was a widow. It is good to know with the Lord when you're walking that your relevant gaps are built up there are gaps of spirit-inspired import. The Bible says, whoever knows what is right to do and fails to do it for him, it is sin. So there are so many gaps we have to close. How about scriptural knowledge gap? The Bible says people are destroyed before lack of knowledge. Many of us reject knowledge. We don't make efforts to be scripture knowledge compliant. I said, because you have rejected knowledge, I reject you from being a priest. So our royal priesthood ministry, they must not lack potent wealth of the treasury of the knowledge of the word of God. So that he said, since you have forgotten the law of your God, I also will forget your children. It's pregnant with an analytical meaning. And before we, before 